game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to do this little follow-up video here to uh, the fight that I was most excited about on the card. It was the fight that I truly believe, um, along with Pitbull Cruz and Rob Valenzuela, stole the show, and that's the heavyweight fight, the heavyweight scrap between Jared Anderson, a.k.a. the last American heavyweight hope, and Martin Bacoli, you know, the, 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 the fighting pride of the Congo and, and apparently Scotland as well. Um, big fight because on the Jared Anderson side, side of things, he hasn't really fought much of anybody with a pulse in his boxing career, but he's been getting all this hype and getting he's been, he's been getting these ridiculous comparisons to Riddick Bowe, and I've been telling you guys, I've been sticking my finger in this camera for a couple years now and telling you guys, look, He's a good little fighter, he's talented, but the next Riddick Bowe, he is definitely not, right? And for Marvin Bacoli, he's been a guy that's been in the top 15, top 10 for a while, just hasn't been able to, to get those fights against the names, um, but has been one of the most consistent heavyweights in the division since he got lost to Michael Hunter back in, what was it, 2018 or 2019? I believe he was on an eight or nine fight winning streak coming into the fight, so um, really good fight. You know, Anderson was fighting somebody that was bigger than him for the first time, Someone that was really going to give him some some real smoke, and um, it was smoke that really and truthfully he just he couldn't handle because he got packed up in five rounds. Um, I don't even think Bacoli even fully got to his second win and his like optimum level of of, of how he fights. Because normally Bacoli, yeah, he's strong throughout the fight, but he normally gets better as fights go on. He he normally fights pretty most of every round he, he's boxing in. Uh, Anderson could not take the heat. He got he got dropped early in the fight, and then uh, Daniel got knocked out the ring. And then he 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 dipped down, and then got hit with an uppercut that ultimately knocked him out. So a lot of his defensive mistakes, like he has this bad habit where he likes to pull straight out and maybe, well not maybe, definitely over rely on his reflexes. And um, it never costed him against Charles Martin. And it never costed him against any of those, like, Serbian cruiserweight dudes he was fighting. But it costed him against Martin Bacoli because Bacoli, um, he knew which shots to throw. He knew how to set him up. And on top of that, he's, what, 6'5", 270-plus pounds, fighting machine from the Congo. And uh, Jared Anderson could handle it. And really, even the, like, there was one round, I think it was maybe, maybe the third, one, one of these rounds where Jared kind of had some moments. But, like, even when he was landing... I just don't think any of his punches really had any effect on Marvin Bacoli. So then the question begs is if Jared Anderson continues to box, because, you know, he don't like boxing. So with this loss, you don't know where he's going to go. But if he continues to box and pursue a career, which I think he will, does uh, he have the punching power to keep, like, legitimate, durable, top 10 guys, top 15 guys off of him? Because he couldn't do that with Bacoli. And, um... There's still good fights out there for him. I, I, I will, I'll say this about Jared. Well, I'll say this. Surprisingly, even though he got absolutely stomped out, the most surprising thing in this fight was, uh, for me, was actually the grit. Like, the fact that he didn't quit and he kept fighting. You know, the way he's talked over the years, I thought he would have been a little uh, uh, quicker to quit. And he didn't do that. So I give him that much credit. And I give him credit for taking the fight because Marvin Bacoli is a guy that, that guys aren't exactly jumping up to fight. So he does get credit for me for that. But um, the next Riddick Bowie is not... And um, all these, you know, I, a lot of people in the boxing media, and they know who they are. When, when Philip Hargovich lost to Daniel Dubois, a lot of people were quick to uh, tell me how uh, Philip Har Hargovich was overrated and this, that, and the third. And at the, at the present moment, he is. Like, I can't, I can't argue that right now because he has to prove himself. But uh, I'll tell you this, he didn't get as waxed and as dominated as Jared Anderson did. So those same people that were telling me Hargovic is overrated, I'm about to tell you guys that Jared Anderson is overrated when I see you. But um, nonetheless, uh, as far as Bacoli, let's talk about him because he's been in these rankings for a little bit of time. He wants uh, big fights. He deserves big fights. Um, he's, he's, he's stopped Kevin Johnson, who almost never gets stopped. He's beat Tony Oka on the road in France. Um, now, he's beat, now he's taking the old Jared Anderson. And... Uh, Coley has a very good resume and he deserves a big fight and I think there's uh, a truckload of, of really good fights out there for him. I know, I know the fight that's been discussed uh, the most has been 
Bokoli versus Zhang, which I think would be a great fight. I think it's two guys with uh, legitimate one-punch power that uh, I think it could be a really entertaining scrap. Um, and that fight, I might lean just, it's hard, because Zhang's a hard guy to predict, because Zhang's gas tank is so unbelievably bad after a couple rounds, but he just has such a great punch, power punch, and timing, so you can't ever fully ride him off. But um, I, will, I, I favor... Bacoli against Zhang is because I think he could fight. He, he, he can make Zhang fight hard majority of the fight for the majority of the round and really gas him up. Maybe even quicker than a lot of his other opponents. So that would be an entertaining scrap. Um, but I'll say this. I would even give Bacoli a bigger fight than Zhang. Um, I feel like Bacoli has been one of the most consistent guys in this division for years. He just hasn't had the higher profile opponents he hasn't been on american television so he, people didn't pay attention to him but he was always there and I, and I covered a couple of his fights here on youtube um i want to see him against joseph parker i think joseph parker versus bacoli would be an amazing fight parker is in one of the best runs of form at the moment you know uh beat wilder beat Zhang, former champion um bacoli should be fighting a guy like who's, who's, who's like a former champion and parker fits that description um parker has a granite chin matured a lot as a heavy, heavyweight good good speed um crafty just a real crafty guy and i think it'd be it'd be we've seen him navigate wilder we've seen him navigate Zhang, which are two very dangerous styles but seeing him have to navigate a guy like bacoli who brings an interesting blend of like see bacoli brings an interesting blend of size of 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 uh work rate of power um of even some fundamentals I, I think that would be a hard puzzle to solve for Joseph Parker. So I like that fight for him. I, 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 something like that. I, I know he mentioned the Michael Hunter rematch. Michael Hunter is the lone loss um, on his record, so he wants to avenge it, and, and I fully get that. And if they make it, cool. I, I ain't mad at it because I understand it. But truth be told, Michael Hunter, I wasn't really too entertained his last fight when he fought Cassius Cheney. And, um, you know, it is what it is. I, I just... Michael Hunter, to me, I, I feel like boxing's passed him by a little bit. That, that, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. He could put me wrong. But I'm just, if it happens next, I'll accept it. But I, I, I want to see Bacoli against, um, you know, like Parker. Uh, Bacoli versus Shane. You know what? Even Bacoli versus a Philip Hergovich. I think that could be a good uh, sink or swim fight for Philip Hergovich. Hergovich just, just got stopped by Dubois. He got exposed a little bit. And um, actually, a lot of bit, to be honest. He got exposed and he needs to get back on track. And I think, you know, he's always been, a, he's always going to be a guy that has to take hard fights like Bacoli. Bacoli was a guy that people were linking his name to before he lost to Dubois to fight. And I think now that could be a good sink or swim fight for him. If he beats Bacoli, all of a sudden now you beat a good contender. You're back in the mix. You looked at to be, you, you, you looked at in a different class, a different, in a different caliber now. So I like that fight. I think, I think Herkovich's stamina issues which had been a problem, would, would, would definitely um, be tested in that fight because of how Bacoli likes to fight. And, um, yeah, it's a banger. So, look, uh, you give me Bacoli versus Hergovich, Bacoli versus Parker, Bacoli, uh, Bacoli versus Zhang, I think he's on that tier heavyweight. I, th I think that's the tier he needs to fight on. And my, my take is this. If he can beat one of those kinds of guys, any, any one of those guys, then he needs, to be t he, he needs to be talked about for a world title shot immediately, straight away. Because, um... One thing about Bacoli that I can say, and more so than most heavyweights, is that from when I've watched him fight, and I've watched like maybe six or seven fights of his, um, he's pretty consistent. What you see is what you get. He always brings excitement. He always fights hard. He always, you know, delivers a good a good show and a good performance. And um, he deserves. He, he's doing it the right way, and he deserves his chance at, at, at bigger fights and, and glory in the sport. So, uh, as for Jared Anderson, look, it's not really shocking to me. This, this fight was shocking to a lot of people because they. They didn't know who Bacoli was, and a lot of people for years were were overrating the, the, the skills of Jared Anderson and the pros. And I, I, I quite frankly, was never that high on him. Um, I, any of you guys who have listened to me talk about him know that, you know, I, I just didn't think he was as good as advertised. Not to say that he's not talented. He's definitely talented. Um, but not as good as they say he is. They, they were calling him the next Riddick Bow and the heir apparent to the heavyweight throne. And look, one loss doesn't define... A fighter, I'm not one of those guys. He can still come back strong um, and rebound, but he's going to have to really uh, develop in a great, mighty way if he wants to get to where they say he should be. But uh, nonetheless, entertaining scrap. Shout out to both men for giving us an amazing fight. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Can, can Jared Anderson come back from this, or is that it for him? Is he, is he done? 
And uh, as far as Marvin Bacoli, who do you want to see him in with next and why? Leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding, Daniel. So until next time, Thank take you care. for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Boxing Hall of Fame out here in Canada, New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.